In this film, Leslie embarks on a journey to tell her whole story, not just the three minutes that cyber bullies try to define her by. Let it be known today that Dr. Leslie Franklin is passionate about the lives of youth, immigrants, women, and women of color. She has a legacy of not only providing life-changing and empowering services to marginalized communities, she has historically gone out of her way to support women of color in business and the nonprofit sector. Leslie Franklin was born in Southern California to a working class family. Her family values were centered on advanced education and the pursuit of economic stability. Leslie remembers her mother as being resourceful, but somewhat unhappy in her day-to-day -day life. While she was a dedicated mother, Leslie says her mother's focus was on achievement, which helped Leslie become an accomplished musician and athlete. Leslie struggled with issues of fitting in due to living in a working class family in the upper middle class neighborhood where the majority of families had engineering degrees and worked in aerospace. Leslie's parents did their best to provide a stable home and opportunities for success to their children. Leslie's father grew up in poverty, helping to support 13 siblings after his biological father passed away. This would have a major influence on his limited view of the rich diversity in American society. All children feel the pain of their parents' struggles and disappointments. Leslie was no stranger to the challenges her parents faced. While Leslie's home was rich with ambition, it lacked the affection and warmth she needed as a young girl. Leslie sought the affection she lacked at home in the world. School, music, sports, and culture began to feed her heart and soul. Leslie also discovered the outside world was not as perfect as it seemed. People's prejudices became evident. Leslie searched for ways to create understanding between lines of culture and race. Leslie grew up with a hearing impaired aunt and uncle. Leslie notes how people treat those that they perceive as different. Leslie also discovers that she, too, has something unique about herself that people will judge and discriminate against. Leslie realizes she is a same-gender loving woman and later falls in love with a beautiful woman of Afro-Caribbean descent and also becomes a co-parent of a mixed-race daughter. This is where she experiences the ugliness of racism and gender discrimination. Post-college, Leslie identifies her core mission, social justice and working to dismantle systems of inequality, create visibility for social injustice, and support marginalized people. After working for 25 years in higher education, teaching clinical and forensic psychology, along with working as a clinical director at several nonprofits, Leslie forms the Center for Culture and Diversity with colleagues from the university. After several years, Leslie decides to start her own practice, providing a social justice therapy practice which provides services to individuals, families, adults, and children, and adolescents. Leslie also starts providing mental health services in schools. Her firm begins providing psychological evaluation for immigrants seeking asylum or change of status. Leslie assembles a team of primarily women of color to staff her agency. Her clients are also primarily women of color impacted by trauma, race, class, and gender issues. During this time, Leslie is recruited by the Director of Behavioral Health to help in the implementation of a national grant program for Native American and Alaskan youth. Leslie spends the next three years working with an organization in southwestern Alaska. Leslie spends three years working with Native Alaskans helping to implement the first inpatient substance center due to the number of youth who were taking their lives by huffing. This work would change her life. It was during her time in Alaska that she begins to embrace an indigenous spirituality as part of her healing practice. In October 2018, Leslie's work and health take a toll on her. 
due to the stress and family medical issues. Leslie's stress takes a toll on her behavior after she is diagnosed with type 2 diabetes and starts on a medication to which she had an adverse reaction. Because of this medication and recent onset of diabetes, Leslie begins to experience brain fog and confusion, which leads to her making statements from a place of woundedness that cause her to be inaccurately profiled in the media. I had an incredibly human moment that I'm not proud of and I regret. I'm also aware that that's not who I am, that there's so many other parts of me the teacher, the healer, the psychologist, the mother, the wife, all of those are parts of me and a belief in equality for everyone and especially justice. And my second half of my life has been devoted to that in ways that I never imagined. One of the activists she has worked with who knew her well joined forces with a film producer to tell Leslie's real story and shed light on the life of someone who has been falsely portrayed in the media. The media is a powerful tool to shed light on injustice, but when that tool is misused and individuals are falsely portrayed, it can bring about the same destruction that discrimination and prejudice causes. Dr. Leslie Franklin does not have a legacy of mistreating and discriminating against people of color. She has a lifetime and legacy of support, care, service, and advocacy for those at the highest risk for oppression, marginalization, and discrimination. Yes, Leslie Franklin had a bad day. In the heat of a disagreement, she said something inappropriate and outright wrong but she doesn't deserve to be destroyed for it. Almost every human being has said something in a moment of anger or frustration that they deeply regret, and Dr. Franklin is no different. Leslie has made herself accountable and made changes to address her burnout so that she never gets to a point of complete mental and physical exhaustion. She has not only apologized publicly, she offered to meet with the man she had an altercation with to clear things up in person. Restorative justice teaches us that healing is always possible with accountability and change. That's why we should believe half of what we see and question what we hear. We introduce you today to the real Dr. Leslie Franklin, our sister, our ally, and our friend. Where we find the truth, open up your cipher and...